everybody had their shoes on We could go to the park Two and three have got dressed themselves Looks like in the dark Shorts and flip flops in January Are you flipping insane? When it comes to leaving the house It's a Groundhog Day Hi there, my name is James and thank you so much for checking out my podcast Dad Mind Matters helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. In this podcast, I'm going to give you my top five tips on how best to leave the house calmly, effectively, and hopefully not stressfully. I'm a happily married father of three. We have three children under the age of 10. So this is something I've got a bit of experience with. If you're a parent, you will no doubt completely understand the stress and pain that trying to leave the house can be. I completely forget what it's like just to leave the house. I remember as a single man or even just when me and my wife were together and we just leave the house. You just get your, your phone, your keys, you you'd close the door, you'd leave. The minute you have a child, it's an, it's an operation which needs military planning in order just to sort of leave the house and go for a walk around the block. It's also something that I don't think I've, I've actually got much better at over the past decade of being a parent. When you've got a brand new baby, you seem to take an insane amount of stuff for every possible weather condition, any eventuality, crampons, uh, anti-venom, all sorts of just bonkers things you don't need because you're so terrified of something happening. That eases off slightly, but you're still either end up taking the wrong stuff or not the right stuff, or it's just an absolute scrum. The way our working lives are set means that I end up doing the lion's share of the school runs. And I don't know if it's just because I have to ask my children about 10 times to put their shoes on or to put their socks on or to brush their teeth or have you got your book bag or have you got your jacket or no, you can't wear that. It, it's it's just super stressful and it doesn't ever seem to get any better. These are the five things that I have practiced and actually are proven and, have, and do generally help when you're trying to leave the house with any number of children in a sort of a set amount of time. Okay, tip number one, pre-pack the bag the night before. This makes a massive difference. This is almost certainly the last thing you're going to want to do. You, you're starting to de-stress from a busy day at work. The kids might be in bed. You might have a glass of wine in your hand or a cup of tea. Things, And now you've got to think about sorting out book bags and preparing uh, lunch boxes and getting bags ready. It's a nightmare, but in that your children might either not be in the room or they might be asleep and there's no other distraction. There's no one asking you for anything. There's no one fighting. There's no one looking for charges. There's no one refusing to wear these particular socks. It's worth doing it. Doing it in the morning when there's a million other things where no doubt there'll be some sort of mini disaster unfolding. It's just gonna make your stress levels go through the roof. My wife's great, she, t she tends to leave the house really early and she gets up early and when I get up in the morning, the, there are three pairs of shoes, three bags, three work school bags, maybe three book bags. It's all laid out for us at the, at the front door. So literally all we need to, as we are passing through, we are gonna just pick it up with us. If you wanna be super organized, put it in the car the night before. Maybe don't put food in the car the night before. I'd obviously keep food in the fridge, but keep anything you don't, anything you can do to cut down the stress of trying to get your kids, do it, do it the day before. I know that you will probably think, I don't wanna do this. I can't be bothered trying to sit down and watch some telly and chill out. But that half an hour spent, will, you will thank yourself the next day. Tip number two, have a wet bag or, some, or put some rubbish bags in the car so they've got somewhere to put some rubbish. One of the most stressful times is trying to get the kids to swimming um, on a Saturday morning. We take the kids swimming on a Saturday morning and then straight after we've got a, a pretty quick turnaround in order to get the kids to football training, which is a good half an hour away. There's not a lot of time to make mistakes. And one thing that I really, really helped stop getting football kit wet from wet towels and wet goggles and hats is to have a Ziploc bag or a wet bag that you can transfer or a dirty clothes bag that you can transfer stuff into. That really helps. Peeps, I think in America they call it a Ziploc bag, but if you can do that, that can really help as well, I think. So, okay, this is more specific for if you're taking your kids swimming, 
but I know that oh, trying to get, after they've done swimming and they're tired and maybe a bit grumpy, you, you, you get them out of the wet clothes, you put the wet clothes in your Ziploc bag, and then and then they're away. You don't have to worry about it. It's just a bag of wet clothes, and then you've got the freedom to put freedom. Then you can basically then get into dry clothes. The number of of, of football sessions that have been ruined understandably because your son is like my shorts are wet i'm basically wet and cold on a field in wet shorts it basically is just one less thing to worry about keeping everything together you don't have to deal with it at, the, at that moment deal with it at the end of the session and also it's not making your the back of your car wet it limits things for children to get cross about when you've literally just take give me all your wet stuff throw the wet stuff out you know because they're getting getting changed but in a cubicle on their own just throw it under the door you're standing there with a the wet bag you get it all in it's all packaged up done and actually the tip of maybe having a couple of plastic bags in the car for just general and getting the kids in the habit of don't chuck it on the floor so that at the end of the month or whenever you clean the car which was is probably <laughs> two or three times a year it's not absolutely disgusting and you've not got cereal that's been sort of trodden into the ground and you, you've not got toffees that have melted into in those bits of the car seat it just it's a nightmare the more organized your car can be and just the transition it means that you're you know there's more places for them to put rubbish more obvious bin bags just stick a wrapper in it just means you're cutting down that when you in eventually try and sort of give the car a bit of a clean it's not absolutely disgusting tip number three give yourself more time than you think you're going to need like everything the more you do it the better you'll get at it and the first few times of meeting the school run were horrendous and now having done it a few hundred times and having had a few hundred horrendous mornings where i thought i could cry we're getting quite good at it Give yourself way more time than you need. So I know that my kids need, we need a good 45 minutes to an hour from the minute they, you prize them out of bed and, and they wake them up to, you've got, and you've also got three children who might have different needs in the morning. Some might want to have breakfast first in their pajamas. Someone might want to get, you know, one might get into school uniform first. Sometimes the way I do it is that I say, you get ready first and then you might have five or ten minutes of screen time as a reward so but always give yourself way more time don't sit in bed and think oh i've got an hour i can i can scroll through tiktok or i can you know watch a bit of youtube just get up you can always do that at the end if you find everyone's ready everyone's dressed book bags are all sorted everyone's brushed their teeth brushed their hair uh you've got everything you need for the day and you've got 10 15 minutes happy days sit down but you can't you can't do that Bef you have to do it at the end once everything's ready the priorities it's about prioritizing what you need to do and the most important thing you do is get them up get some make sure they've had some breakfast make sure they brush their teeth make sure they've got everything they need for the day make sure they're in the school uniform and then once you've done that and then they will because there's something in it for them if they want to watch television or want to play roblox there's something in it for them there's no incentive if you if you say oh yeah she, you know you can have a bit of, you chill out now we've got plenty of time that time will evaporate tip number four have a routine do everything the same way and the kids will get better at it you'll get better at it. don't just don't start changing things so get used to waking them up at the same time or maybe making sure if you know that your daughter needs a little bit longer maybe wake her up first if, if you know that your sons are a nightmare we're getting dressed maybe them get get them dressed first it's that old saying of do the toughest job of the day first if you're wrestling with kids doing teeth do that first do the worst thing first and then it gets easier from then on but have a routine stick to the routine and do the same routine each day because then after a while they'll just know it they'll just do it themselves you won't have to be bullying people to put their shoes on or shouting people to brush their teeth or smelling breath to see they brush their teeth it'll just happen naturally and tip number five and potentially one that you can use for any stress or element of parenting is have some perspective even with all the organizational tips and all the time management tips i've mentioned here have some perspective you can be organized on time in the car and then things can happen that you didn't foresee there may be a traffic jam you might get stuck behind a tractor all sorts of things you might have you might have forgotten something you have to go back for something have a gauge a level of perspective our children can get sometimes very anxious about being late for school and just just remind them that it's not the end of the world the worst case scenario is okay having to go and go to school via the school office and sign in well it's not on you it'd be on 
it'll be daddy on the naughty late parents list. It's not them. Be embarrassing for them because I'm guessing no one wants to walk in late into their classroom. But just let's gauge a level of perspective. It's not ideal. It's at worst embarrassing. It really isn't the end of the world. You'll cut some smuggling plastic dinosaurs in their coat. Bags of quavers and a plastic swim float Won't wear wellies, guaranteed strep throat Where are my keys? Ask murder she wrote Everyone's crying or needing the loo Do we have any batteries? I haven't a clue There is one thing that I can tell you That the stress of leaving the house Is turning me grey So just to clarify, my top five tips of how to get your kids ready for school and how to leave the house with limited amount of stress and being efficient as possible. Tip number one, pack the bags the night before. The more prepared you are the night before, the more easy the morning itself is going to be. Tip number two, and this is more specific if you're taking kids maybe to swimming club and then on to football club, have a wet bag or a dirty clothes bag that is in the car. So literally once wet clothes are off, they're in the bag and they're not going to make other clothes wet. Also a little tip is hang some plastic bags, maybe from the car seats so that actually there's somewhere for your kids to put that half sausage roll they didn't eat or the wrapper. That way, when you end up having the time to maybe clean your car, it's not an absolute tip. Tip number three, give yourself way more time than you think you're going to need. Don't lie in bed if you think, oh, I've got an hour, I've got some time, get up. You can always have a chill out and a cup of tea and a scroll through your social media once you've got everyone ready. The priority is getting everyone up, dressed, washed, teeth brushed, had some breakfast. If everyone's ready, then that's the time to have a chill out after, not before. Tip number four, have a morning routine and stick to it and practice it and do the same thing in the same order every morning. And before you know it, the kids will be doing it like clockwork. You won't need to be shouting at people for not putting shoes on and telling people to brush their teeth. You'll find that they're doing it themselves. And the last tip, have some perspective. Everyone is doing their best. You are going to have some tough days. You are going to get stuck behind tractors. You are going to forget book bags. You are going to be stuck in traffic jams. It's not the end of the world. And make sure that your kids realize that sometimes things just happen. You can be as organized and get up as early as possible. And there are just some things that you can't foresee. Things are going to happen in life. And it's important that just to have a perspective, be positive, take a deep breath, the worst that can happen is you're going to be late for school. Apologize to the teacher and move on. I really hope you got something from this podcast. I'm trying to create a community to support parents who may be struggling with their mental health or might just be looking for a bit of a life hack or maybe just look to con want to connect with other like-minded people. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help me out to grow the community by following. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel and want to watch more content, I post a podcast on a Monday and a Thursday. Hit subscribe and the notification button. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. The kids are playing nicely, being sweet, not sour. That'll all change when you step into a shower. Don't worry, because you're the daddy. Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.